it's review time on China Mobile Mac and those of you who are following our daily news probably already know at which device we will have a look today. Yes, you are right, it is the Cube iWork 10, which is also known under the name Cube U100 GT. This tablet is one of the first Windows 8.1 tablets from China and to be honest with you, we were really skeptical in the beginning. Windows 8 is for sure not enjoying a large fan base and we are neither fans of it and this basically does apply to Windows in general. Still we decided to give such a tablet a try and if it was able to change our opinion about Windows 8 or even impress us we will tell you within this video. Have fun watching! As usual, let's first have a look at what Cube is delivering with the iWork 10. The tablet comes in this huge white box which has the iCube imprint along with some symbols on the top, similar to previous Cube packages. On the rear there are some infos regarding the product and some QR code which takes us to the Cube website. Accessories that come with the tablet are a white micro USB data cable, a white OTG cable for using USB peripherals with the tablet, a short user manual in Chinese and English language, a warranty card and a piece of paper with the licensing key of the Microsoft Office Home and Student 2013 glued on it, which we are hiding with the Cube VIP card right now. Unfortunately, we do not know for which purpose this VIP card is. A 9V power supply for charging the tablet comes with the device as well, along with an adapter for local power sockets. Last but not least, we also have a type cover here, but we had to pay extra for it, it does not come with the tablet. Now let's come to the design of the Cube iWork 10. When looking at the tablet's front, it does not appear to be much different from other Windows 8 tablets. Here we find the Windows logo on the bottom, which is a soft button and enables you to get back to the home screen with a single touch. On top of the front, we do also find a front camera with a red status LED next to it. On the left, we do find all the ports and slots of the tablet. To go into details, there is a charging LED, a 3.5mm headphone jack, a mini HDMI port, a micro SD card reader, a micro USB OTG port and the plug for the charger. On the lower side we do find the pins and the magnet for the type cover which holds it in place when being attached to the tablet. On the right side of the tablet we do find nothing. On the upper side we do find a volume rocker to adjust the system volume. When turning the tablet around, we immediately notice that the rear panel is made from brushed metal. Here we do find the two stereo speakers, the rear camera of the tablet, the A-Cube logo and some imprint regarding the power supply, product identification, manufacturer and the operating system. We are quite impressed by the design of the Cube iWork 10, though the tablet is not the slimmest with a thickness of 1.4cm and a weight of 598 grams, it is still very portable and feels quite good in the hands. Also it features a very good build quality. It is kinda comparable to the Microsoft Surface RT, but thanks to the real Windows 8 it is much more flexible. The type cover is a really useful accessory which you should really order together with the tablet for around 40 bucks. The cover is made from some kind of felt, plastic and some magnets and is a really multi-purpose accessory. When flipping it open you will notice the magnet plug with the pins on top. Below comes a fully featured keyboard with an American layout which is really working surprisingly good and gives a good haptic feedback. Below the keyboard there even is a real touchpad with two buttons. This is working surprisingly good and precisely as well, but unfortunately does not support multi-touch. To attach the cover to the tablet you simply hold the lower side of the tab onto the type cover and the magnet is doing its job. It is holding together very strong and you really have to pull quite hard to detach the tablet. Now you can either fold it and close it to carry the tablet around with you with a decent protection or you fold the lid of the case together to get a stand for the tablet which enables you to use it like a real notebook. 
Well, all this is not a new concept, but still it is quite amazing. In real life use we were able to work with this type cover and even very complex office work was done without any issue. China Mobile Mac has been administered completely with the Cube iWork 10 during the past few days. We just noticed two little flaws. First is that you have to shut down the tablet when carrying it around inside the cover, else it is turning on all the time. But this is nothing really bad, as it is booting up within 10 seconds. Second flaw is that you have to place some cloth between the keyboard and the screen, else it will scratch it or the protective film on it in case dirt is in between. Now let's come to the screen and this is probably one of the most important criteria for a tablet PC. And here the Cube iWork 10 did not disappoint us at all. Though the low resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels on a 10.1 inch screen results in quite large pixels, the picture quality is still very good and sharp enough. Also the screen does reproduce colors very naturally, contrast and brightness are just perfect and you even can read the screen good enough to work with it while being outside. The viewing angles are also very good and we did only notice a slightly reduced brightness. The touch panel is working extremely precise and even allowed us to control the classic Windows user interface without any issues, which is something we did not expect at all. We only have one thing to complain about, Cube is placing the panel a little bit too far on top, so 3 to 4 lines of pixels are hidden behind the upper frame. But this is something that does not really bother and you will only notice that in the beginning. The Cube iWork 10 is equipped with an Intel Batray T quad core processor which is clocked at 1.33 GHz or 1.8 GHz in Turbo Boost mode. The GPU is an integrated Intel HD graphics for basic graphics rendering. In addition there are 2 GB of LPDDR3 RAM of which 1.46 GB can be used, the rest is used by the GPU. Basically the tablet does even support 64 bit but only a 32 bit Windows 8.1 comes pre-installed with the tab. The internal memory is 32GB of which around 17GB are free to use. Using a microSD card you can upgrade the memory easily. Let's have a look at some benchmark results. We did install the 3DMark benchmark for Windows RT on the device and it reached 8846 points in the ISDOM 720p test, 4306 points in the ISDOM Extreme test and 7061 points in the ISDOM Unlimited test. In Geekbench 3 the tablet reached 617 points in the single core test and 1894 points in the multi core test. PC Mark 8 Home Accelerated 3 gave the tablet 962 points. Thus it should be clear enough that this is for sure not a high end computer, but this is something probably only very few people would need in form of a tablet PC. People who want to play games from time to time only still will be satisfied with the tablet we did run Asphalt 8 on the tablet which is available in the Windows Store and it was running almost smooth. It appears however that the iWork 10 is more of a workaholic and does a great job when it comes to multimedia, internet uh, and office work. Surfing the internet is working buttery smooth no matter if you use the modern UI Internet Explorer or some desktop browser. Even large sites open in multiple tabs are not an issue with the tablet. Also, other Windows 8 apps are running perfectly smooth, like here the Bing Maps app. Also, the system UI is of course very smooth and lag-free. On the classic Windows UI, the smooth user experience continues. To make it short, for the price we do not have anything to complain about here and the tablet is a lot of fun during daily usage. Now let's see how the tablet performs in real life tasks in combination with the type covers. So let's dock them together and move on. Here we are now opening the Google Chrome browser using the touchpad. This is working flawlessly already. An internet address can be typed without any issues as well, of course using the keyboard. When navigating through websites you have several ways to choose from. You can either scroll with the mouse and a scroll bar or you are scrolling with the keyboard or you are doing it directly onto the screen. The last option is in our opinion the best one. As you were able to see large websites are opening quite fast. Now let's have a look at Excel which comes pre-installed on the tablet thanks to Microsoft Office Home and Student 2013. Here we choose a rather large template to be exact a weight loss table.
And here you immediately see how well the tablet performs during such tasks. Access running perfectly smooth and table contents can be changed without any issues or delays. Using the type cover there are no barriers preventing you from doing your work. But even without the type cover you can work with the Microsoft Office surprisingly well even though it will be less time efficient. Now let's open a PowerPoint session real quick and here the performance is totally satisfying as well. Whoever wants to run or edit presentations on the go will have nearly endless possibilities here. Now let's test the multimedia performance of the Cube iWork 10. We are testing this now by using YouTube in desktop mode through the Google Chrome browser. First we are doing a sound check of the internal speakers. As you were able to hear, these are generating quite some noise and deliver a satisfying audio quality with slight bass playback. Surprisingly, even at maximum volume, the audio output is not distorted and there are no scratchy noises. The audio output through the headphone check is crystal clear, very balanced and powerful. Very satisfying results. During playback of full HD videos on YouTube, the tablet is also performing quite well, even though the Flash player is quite a resource-wasting piece of software. Another interesting possibility of a Windows-based tablet is to connect it to some external screen, which is only possible in a limited way with iOS and Android tablets. This time we are not testing this using an HDMI cable, but instead we are using the Intel VD technology, which is sending the screen content to a TV, for example through Wi-Fi. Here we are now activating the Intel VD feature on our LG Smart TV. On the tablet we are now switching to devices, projectors and there we already see the TV as we did test this in advance already. With one tap the connection is being established. For the test we are now transmitting the screen content in the native tablet resolution. Full HD is possible as well, but then you will not be able to smoothly play HD flash videos anymore. Local videos however would still work. Here we can see the tablet screen on the TV now. We can now work with it as usual. Now we are opening a YouTube video again to demonstrate the audio stream to the TV. We will also open some apps while doing so to demonstrate multitasking.
the Wi-Fi reception quality of the Cube iWork 10 did totally surprise us during our test. It happens very seldom that some device managed to get such a high signal strength in the wall house. We did not encounter any place inside the house where the signal strength went below 50%, thus HD streaming is pretty much everywhere possible. Even outside in the garden we did not encounter any place where the signal broke off. This really is remarkable. Bluetooth was working just as fine as Wi-Fi and reached an impressive range of 20 meters under free view. Another noteworthy part of the Cube iWork 10 is the battery. The two lithium polymer cells inside the tablet have a total capacity of around 8000 milliamps. In real life use, this is enough for a day of battery life under heavy usage. We did administrate China Mobile Max solely with the tablet for two days and always had around 35% of charge left at the end of the day. This really is quite impressive. In our application specific tests we reached with 50% brightness 7.5 hours of battery life while watching full HD videos from the internal memory, 4.5 hours while watching video streams, 8 hours while surfing the internet and up to 10 hours when only doing office work. Thus the Cube iWork 10 reached the first place in terms of battery life when comparing it to all tablets we did test so far. The two cameras inside the Cube iWork 10 have a resolution of 2 megapixels without autofocus. Thus the quality is a bit limited, but to be honest most will not need a good camera inside their tablets, so this is perfectly fine. In case of the Cube iWork 10 we have to say that the camera is useful for Skype video calls, but not for pictures. Both of these shots were made with the iWork 10, one with the rear and one with the front camera. Our opinion about the Cube iWork 10, with the Cube iWork 10, Cube did really release an amazing tablet PC to the market which was able to satisfy us during our test. In the beginning we did not expect it, but a Windows 8 tablet really is a fully featured PC and in combination with the tab cover you can basically do all the stuff you would do on your laptop or PC, except stuff like video and professional image editing. Especially the amazing performance and office use over surfing the internet that really impress us and makes the Cube iWork 10 a real workaholic. The amazing battery life and the build quality are making the overall package perfect. The only thing some might miss is every G modem and Cube should also work on the screen alignment. The Cube iWork 10 is priced at around 380 bucks through Eternal Team at AliExpress. This price includes DLL Express shipping and the type cover. The written review is following as usual on chinamobilemac.com and there you also find the link to the supplier. As usual, we hope that you did like this video. If yes, please give us a thumbs up, drop a comment and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Thanks for watching, bye and see you soon.